Okay, could you say in a sentence or so uh, a little bit about your background and who you are and what your connection is with this event? <clears throat> I used to describe myself as a philosopher and a filmmaker because I started out majoring in philosophy and I couldn't let go of academia, but on the other hand, I made my first film the last month of my senior year in college and that reshaped my life because I decided I was destined to be a filmmaker. I thought I was a natural. And you can see it on, you can watch it on YouTube. It's called The Epiphany of Slocum Furlough. Of late, however, I've, I've been shanghaied for 50 years in the computer field building tools and as a minority dissenter disagreeing with everything that's out there. And so uh, I call myself a designer, a generalist, and a contrarian. Now what do you have to do with Doug Engelbart? <laughs> we, go right, we go way back. When did you first meet Doug? I started in the computer field in 1960 in graduate school. As soon as I saw you could put screens on them, my attitude was, hell, I'm a filmmaker, I can do this. Because a filmmaker has to deal with every level of technicality, so this was just another level of technicality, another kind of sprocket hole, another kind of uh, rotary equipment, as it were, another, another piece of technology to be dominated. And I decided it was my job to design the documents of the future, because if I didn't, the techies would screw it up. And that is exactly what has happened. So from 1960 to 1965, I was completely on my own because I didn't know that anyone else was working on designing electronic documents. In 1965, I gave my first uh, talk at, a, at an ACM conference, and afterward, Bob Taylor, Doug's sponsor, came up to me and asked if I'd heard of Doug Engelbart, and I had not. The following year, I managed to get out here to the Bay Area and uh, met Doug in 66 and his team, Bill English, and uh, Smokey, uh, I forget Smokey's last name. So. Doug and Bill convinced me that the mouse was the best pointing device. I thought it would be the light gun before that. And Smokey convinced me that the best form of transportation would be the skateboard, which I later took up, and that turned out to be wrong. But in any case, <coughs> I was deeply impressed by Doug's charm and, and, and warmth, and I loved the atmosphere of the lab, and I was, a hint was dropped that I might get a job as a programmer, but I didn't think of myself as doing that, and also the fundamental structure was hierarchical and I couldn't get behind that because my whole thing has always been non-hierarchical document structure. So, the, so we've, we've been in friendly communication ever since that time, occasional communication, but then in the 1980s we got very close. Karen uh, and Doug took up after, well, gee whiz, I stayed at his house a couple of times while, while Ballard was still alive and, and saw the wreckage of the burnt, burnt out house Doug acted in a little film of mine in 1992, which is also at YouTube, called Silicon Valley Story. And uh, did you work directly with Doug on technical stuff? Nope. And but we always were in conversation about it. And Doug and I independently came up with links that were not included in, in the document file. You see, that's, this is the fundamental error of all electronic documents today, that they've mashed the links into the file, thereby screwing it up. And, uh, and my designs are, from the beginning did not have links in the file, especially since our 1979 designs. And Doug's from the beginning at NLS in the 60s did not have links in the file, they were separate. So this, this was a convergence of our ideas. However, we had completely different mentalities because I hated working with groups and committees. I, it was, it was uh, uh, wasn't one of Doug's big ideas, the idea of collaboration, that when people work together, they accomplish more when, than when they work alone? Yes, and my idea was precisely the opposite. I've always been a, 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 a uh, lone wolf designer. My heroes were Frank Lloyd Wright, Orson Welles, Buckminster Fuller, and uh, people who operated totally on their own with very little input and a great deal of output. And, uh, and uh, the, it was axiomatic when I was a boy that the IQ of a committee was the square, of the, sum of the square root of the sum of the squares of the IQs of the members. In other words, that the more people on the committee, the dumber it got. And they're, they're, they're talking about collective IQ was, it seemed to me, an inane concept because it, it, whereas intelligence is about being able to hold simultaneously a large number of ideas and talk about their alternatives and their variants and come to a design that makes sense, that, that optimizes a whole lot of things. 
Whereas doing this within a group, you have to wait for the slowest member to get the dumbest concept and bring everybody up to speed on every new uh, alternative, and this essentially makes any serious design impossible. So did Doug influence you in any beneficial way? Well, yes, we loved each other. But aside from that, uh, I, 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 came, I was in deep sympathy. <clears throat> I was completely persuaded that the no his notion of making groups work together better was an extremely fine idea and should be done. And, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, people who claim to be following in his footsteps are going off, uh, going off a cliff. They just, they're just, today, that today's computer world is an asinine mishmash of crap. <coughs> and uh, and uh, you have an alternate vision I certainly do. I certainly do, and you can see my demos on YouTube. I have a I have a different form of data structure. I have a different form of document. All of which I'm trying to implement on a on a uh, serious basis. And the What's the barriers to to completion of software are many. What's your YouTube channel called? The Ted Nelson, no spaces. T -H -E, but if Ted Nelson. Yes, with no spaces, but if you, you have to Google it. If you go to YouTube and put that in, you'll get a lot of additional stuff that other people put there. If you go to Google and, and put in Vita Nelson with no spaces, you will go directly to my channel that only has my stuff. So what is the essence of your vision as opposed to Doug's vision? <laughs> people ask me this. It's like saying in a word, uh, tell me in two words, what is Christianity? Or tell, explain nuclear physics in, in, in one short sentence. And the answer is, uh... The, the point being that, that there are visualizations and conceptualizations involved which require blackboards and, and animations and, uh, and words simply don't tell it. I've given up. Now, if you didn't really share Doug's vision, did that have any impact on your relationship with him? No, because first of all, Doug loved everybody. And secondly, uh, we, 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 for some reason, we had a special, a special uh, um, rapport because he envied my glibness and ability to put things into word quickly. Where, whereas he was a slow talker and, uh, and did not put things into words very well. In, in fact, he put things into words very badly. He would give a talk in which he would introduce an acronym in the first sentence, use it in the second sentence as he introduced a second acronym, use both of these, those acronyms in the third sentence, and so he was incomprehensible by paragraph two. Whereas uh, uh, I try to adjust what I say to whoever I'm talking to. My, my greatest uh, flaw, I've realized, is trying to say it all at once and then getting very annoyed when people don't get it the first time. So, that, so learning patience has been my problem. Whereas Doug, Doug had patience and therefore was able to, do, to accomplish a great deal more. Because I heard that sometimes he would get frustrated because he would try to present his vision and then people would have difficulty grasping it. Is that what you've heard? Well, yes, an, an experience I've had also. Uh, and. Uh, Understanding Doug's vision is very simple, which is simply that, that, that there will be a mind meld which we must accomplish through exterior mechanisms such as the representation of ideas on screen, the representation of, of, uh, of documents, the, uh, the uh, various ways of working together, but at the same time the whole objective is to bring the minds into coordinated focus. And, uh, and uh, uh, this is a highly desirable objective. And the problem is, I think that everyone has forgotten his real vision and, uh, and uh, gone off in, in the horrible directions of today's computer documents, such as PDF and Microsoft Word, which imitate paper. Now, that means that if you, if you imitate paper, that to me is like tearing the wings off a 747 and driving it on the highway as a bus. You have, you have destroyed the actual potentialities and capabilities of the interactive structure, that, that the, the magnificent interactive machines that are in front of us, and, and, and now done something absurd. It's like, why don't you imitate uh, scrimshaw or, or, or uh, tattoos? It, it just has nothing to do with the representation of the depth of co uh, the constructs and, and, and uh, relations that have to be shown. Why do people have difficulty working together? If they make a decision that it's beneficial to do so, why would it be hard to do? Say again. Say that slowly okay. so I can understand it. Why is it difficult for people to collaborate together? Why is that hard to do? It's if they decide that they want to, that it's beneficial. <laughs> it's very easy to collaborate if you have exactly the same plan. It's very hard to maintain exactly the same plan. And then the disagreements and the explanation of the disagreements and the motivations for the disagreements cause friction and, and, uh, and schism. 
And that is why we have, why every religion has so many different denominations. It is why we have politics. It is why, because different people have different agendas. The synchronization of minds is perhaps the hardest. It's harder than, than the synchronization of atomic clocks. It's, it's extremely difficult. So you're saying minds are more complicated than machines? That's a silly way to put it. Uh, machines are complicated to any level of complexity, and so are minds. The problem is so that, 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 that thoughts, you see, let's distinguish between minds and thoughts. A mind is something which can hold thoughts, and thoughts we can, we can actually study. Minds are much harder. But if we talk about representing the thoughts in a document, now we have something concrete that is, that is, that is not dependent on the kinds of minds that we have. And we can talk about ways we can represent the, the thoughts that people can share. And, and uh, the problem in all the representations that have come about so far, and I include Doug's, is that they've tried to force everything into hierarchy. And not everything's hierarchical. In fact, very few things from my point of view are hierarchical. But I've heard, I've actually heard techies say, well, everything is hierarchical. That is not science, it's metaphysics. And the point is to, to, to be able to represent all the relationships that you really need to represent as distinct from uh, those which are convenient within the structure you choose. Now, if you have an organization which has thousands of people involved, don't they need some kind of hierarchy so that it's clear who gets to decide what? You're asking me a hypothetical about how to build big organizations. And I am not your best expert on that because, of course, there have been many experiments in different ways. Now, Google, for example, is a, non a huge non-hierarchical organization, and it's interesting to see what they've done. Because, as I understand it, each new employee makes a contract with Google, or each, new, each, each team makes a contract with Google to build some new thing, which could fit in any damn way or not at all. And if they fulfill their contract, they get a raise and stay on. And so, so Google is this preposterous amalgam of thousands of unrelated little projects, very few of which we, we see. And that is a non-hierarchical organization, so it's a very interesting experiment. And there, there, there are many other non, there have been many other non-hierarchical experiments. It's interesting to note that the guy who brought the Catholic monasteries under control, which was it, which saint was it? Anyhow, um, he, he was the one who brought military Roman, Roman military organization to the uh, monasteries and, and, uh, and uh, women's monasteries, whatever they're called, and, and insisted that they all have somebody in charge. So he brought the hierarchy. Uh, in and, uh, and uh, thereby brought them under the control of Rome. So there are control issues, there are financial issues, there are all kinds of uh, ideological issues. Getting back to Doug, what do you think was the most memorable thing about him? The most memorable thing about Doug? His warmth and his goodness, which were, which you bathed in. And so whether or not you understood his ideas, you could appreciate being in his company enough to stay on to hear the next dose of his thinking, even though he would express it slowly and cautiously and carefully and, and not always in the best way. Any other comments about Doug before we finish? A good Doug story. A good Doug story. Hmm, calling one up. Spontaneously is not easy. I was hired by a magazine to interview him when he had cancer back in the 1980s. And he was wearing a very strange white wig because of the chemotherapy. Well, that, that, that doesn't lead anywhere. In the drugstore, I found a doll dressed in futuristic raiment with a ray gun that looked just like Doug Engelbart. I couldn't afford to buy two. I bought one, one and sent, him to, sent it to him. I'm so sorry I didn't buy the second one for myself because it was a perfect replica of Douglas Engelbart and, and, uh, and the ray gun symbolizing his, his futurist, his, 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 uh, his, his uh, duel with the future. And uh, he is always, he's always tried to make do with everybody he met. He's all, He's always included everyone he met in his ideas. He's a very inclusive person. And, uh, and this, was, this was part of his greatness, that he was able to be with everybody on their own wavelength and, not, and, and appreciate them uh, even if they weren't the quickest.